There could be unwelcome intruders in your home right now. I see all the blotches. It makes me feel horrible. Oh. They're the most despicable creatures that you could imagine. Britain has 18 million feral pigeons. Moth infestations have shot up by 75%. They're coming out of the towels. And rats are growing immune to poisons. No word of a lie, probably 20 to 25 rats on that grass in the middle of the night. The pests are coming. There's no doubt about it, we've got an infestation. On the front line. We are at war with pests. Four women are leading the fight. God. I said I'm a rat catcher. Well, I nearly shot on his pants. Working in a man's world, they're a force to be reckoned with. Just pop it on over my face and you won't hear me again, OK? I haven't had a rat escape my clutches yet. Armed with specialist cameras for a close-up view of the enemy. This is good for us to see. They use all their guile to solve each mystery. Every case is like a detective story. Who are you going to call? It's time to start the eviction. really do not like rats. I hate the thought of them running up with trousers like legs, so I think I'd cry my eyes out about them. Dirty, horrible things, aren't they? I can have a look at this shed. Not keen on that. Farmer Will is facing his worst nightmare, a barn infested with rats. Lady killer Angela is already on the case. Will doesn't like rats full stop. He's absolutely terrified of them. Some men are like that. And obviously women are as well, it's not just men, but... Some people tell me it's the tails, and some people say it's the way they move. Oh, that's as far as I'm going in there. Not keen on that. Not at all. No way. It doesn't really bother me. I was brought up like my brother and like my dad would just treat you like you were no different from any of the other lads or whatever. Are you all right with this? <laughs> <laughs> Angela examines the evidence in search of a solution for Will. Let's have a look. Oh, dear. Oh, look at the gnawing. Oh my God, it's like dinner on a plate. How long has it been like this? A couple of months. I think, and that's sure. it? And they've yeah. done this in that time? Yeah. You've got straw bales, which are providing nesting material for the rats, which is absolutely ideal. Then we've got food source, obviously potatoes. They've got everything they want. A pile of potatoes left over from last year's crop attracted a few rats. From there, the population spiralled. This is the worst Suck bit. Suck it in. Suck oh, it in. No. In their new home, Will's uninvited guests are thriving. Oof. Smells ratty as well. Is the water readily available on site as well? There's a tap, a tap that drips on Have you top, caught the them licking underneath it? Yeah, I've, every time you walk in, there's only a couple run down the side, you know. Look at where they've been going in and out. <laughs> They're still steaming, some of the droppings are. I'm a little upset, to be honest, because it's true as it goes, is when a pest controller rolls up, there's never any rats to see. But looking at the evidence that we've got here, I'm surprised there's not, to be honest. I think what we'll do is probably set up some cameras and that so we can see what they're doing. I imagine it's like a party in here at night. Rats are nocturnal, so Angela's night vision cameras should reveal the true extent of the scourge. So are you ready for this? Yeah, let's see how we got. You see all the eyes look? Yeah. Look. Look at them. That's a lot of rats, Will. How many of those are pregnant? I would say there's a good 50 to 100 rats here. Did you think there was that many? No, not that many. That would just make my skin crawl. Just... I'm nervous standing there now, to be honest. 
if I don't get rid of them, they, they will destroy our livelihood. There's no two ways about it. I wouldn't like to think how bad it could get, to be honest. Rats in the wild live for up to 18 months. In a single year, one breeding pair can produce a colony of 2,000. I'll probably set up traps and stuff and get the bait box into place. Yeah. I'm looking forward to doing this. I'm glad you are. Are you all right with that? I'm glad you are, because <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> we are, I get excited. You don't look that enthusiastic. Mm, no, nah, I'm not great. <laughs> well, I'll have to just man up a bit, won't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold your hands, you'll be all right. Yeah. It's so tiny. You see it and you know what it is. Oh. We can see them on the towels alone. They're flying away now, it's on the bathroom carpet. Oh dear. Why don't they just attack the tea towels or something like that? Actor and writer Jeffrey, his dog Coco, and all of his prized possessions are at the mercy of a moth infestation but help is on its way. I'm a scientist by training. I suppose you could say I've got a passion for insects. I have many more calls to do moths than either mice, rats, bed bugs. For lady killer Imogen, this is a routine investigation. One in every 10 British homes has trouble with moths. These damn moths, they have been driving me to destruction. Pests can probably smell me coming because I smell of all the other pests I've already killed. Uh -oh. Hi, pest control. Thank you. Irritating creatures, they're often on the roof part. Um, yeah. they, you know. I just saw one flying then. I hate the, f the feeling that something's flying around while I'm asleep and uh, possibly crawling on my head. Can't see any here. One, two, three. Yeah, it's quite heavy. There we go. Oh my goodness. So you can see here. Look at these holes oh, no. in the carpet the, here. There's something white here. Is that anything? To... Yes, that could be eggs, because the eggs are white and sticky. Mm -hmm. And these are all the caterpillars here. Oh my goodness. Can you see it wriggling? I would never have imagined that these were actually living creatures. Yeah, yeah. It's really quite frightening. Can you see that it's got a darker head, a Is white body? Yeah. So that's how you recognise the caterpillar of the clothes moth. This Ooh. is the moth poo. It's gritty. Oh, yes. Can you see? I just thought, oh, it's just no. dust. Where the legs of furniture and the bits where your vacuum cleaner would miss mm. is where they would lay their eggs. The adults you've got flying around are breeding and laying eggs. And these are the eggs that then develop into the terribly destructive caterpillar. They're the most despicable creatures that you could imagine. Yeah. Oh, look, see, this is one Oh, yes, one there, and th that's alive, look. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, I'm just horrified. This has happened very recently. Oh, it's for a morning um, cake, yes, for a wedding. Yes, uh, Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. See, there we go. They're alive, aren't they? They obviously like whatever this is made of. They like to eat fibres that are based on animal material, so things like wool, mm -hmm. cashmere, the more precious, the better. Oh. Until some funds come in, it looks like having to be the charity shops to replenish my, uh, my depleted wardrobe, but never mind. Moths usually breed once a year in the warmth of summer, but in our centrally heated homes, they can reproduce three to four times more often. Oh, those are eggs. This is the part of the job that's interesting, you know, investigating where is it living, where is it breeding, where is its food source. There's a moth just flying right underneath you. It's on your jumper now. They're coming out of the towels. I don't want to have to do loads of cleaning and dusting myself. I want to be able to go away and come back to a comfortable home. This is quite serious. For a small London flat, it's like an oasis for moths. Imogen's specialist cameras give them a close-up view of what's made a home in Geoffrey's rugs and carpets. Oh, my... <laughs> That's unbelievable. Oh, my goodness me. 
How many do you think there are? Oh, I think you've got a, a fair population of moths living in your house. Oh, my goodness me. And presumably they're eating. It's just like the hungry caterpillar. I ate one Chinese rug, two cashmere jumpers, three very smart waistcoats, and it goes on. Yes. Now I'm blooming horrified. The devastation that these little creatures cause, it's amazing considering their size. I mean, if they were an army, they would wreak havoc wherever they invaded. I'm on my way now to do a pigeon job at a castle in Northumberland. What it is with pigeons, sometimes they're not such a, a cut and dry job to do. They're so crafty. I love doing this job. My dad had me gassing rabbits at, at sort of seven year old. It's just my life. Every new job is, is a challenge, really. You know, it's, it's just doing a bit of detective work. Lady Killer Janet's latest case is at Barmore Castle. This ancient building has been plagued by pigeons for 15 years, despite the efforts of mother and son owners, Anne and Jamie. Three times a year I'll go around and I'll, I'll you know, have a look at everything, make sure all the windows are boarded up, there's no holes that can get in. The thing what we need to do is have a walk around and investigate. Yeah. Anne and her late husband bought Barmore in 1979, creating a caravan park in the 12-acre estate. The whole ethos of the park is about caring for the wildlife. And we, you know, we've planted hundreds of trees to feed the birds. So it's, it's, ra it's ironic that we now have to look at um, a solution to the pigeon problem within the castle. Anne and Jamie plan to restore the derelict castle. But the health risk presented by the pigeons has put the work on hold. This is the central tower, but this is where the pigeons seem to home into. It was originally a peel tower from the 1100s. The ultimate aim was to do something with the building. But before we can start work, we'll have to clear these pigeons. So this is the main sort of area where I have problems with the pigeons. It's the top floor, and I suppose you could call it the pigeon penthouse. Are all the windows sealed on yeah, this on this everything. Level? OK. There's two main front rooms here, and I think that's where the main nests are. Hiya, girls. Cool, cool. They are the whole way around the top of the building. You can see the pigeon guana yeah. uh, that's built upon the ledges there. Pigeons can transmit 60 human diseases through their droppings, known as guano, including a potentially deadly form of pneumonia. This is one, one of uh, the jobs that most of us dislike. It's unhealthy. And, and most builders would refuse to come in and do work. If I could get rid of one pest for good, it would be pigeons. I just, I just can't do with them, me. People don't realise the damage that they do cause. If people were more aware, I think they'd look at them in a different light. Feral pigeons choose to nest on or in buildings where they thrive due to the lack of natural predators. The main problem at Barmore is in the Peel Tower. But Jamie's also spotted pigeons in the opposite side of the castle. This is what room? The haunted room. All right. Um, apparently... These... Not right, good. We're ghosts, me. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Just had a look at the open uh, loft hatch and there's a pigeon peeping out at me. Jamie's sure he's sealed up every window and hole in the 62-room castle. And the building's historic status means little more can be done to keep pigeons out. Is the castle a listed building? Yeah, it's list yeah. two star. Right. So it's fairly well restricted as what we can do with it, you know? Yeah, like yeah. We... You've done a good job yourself in going round and sealing up as much as you could, but you, you have to look at a building and think, can I put eco spikes on? Can I put netting on? You know, can I put bird-free gel on? Mm. 
but a building like this... That's, Nothing's applicable. Uh, no, that's just it. Yeah. Janet must now find a way to rid the castle of its resident pigeons, and she has very few options left. The best way forward would be to do a culling exercise. Okay. I had hoped for a humane way of dealing with this. We could put the traps in, but it's a, be a very lengthy, lengthy process. Okay. And at the end of the day, um, this, they're still going to have to be eradicated, even if they're in the trap. With the culling exercise, it, it's done as quickly as possible. Culling or killing the pigeons is a last resort. But even so, it doesn't sit well with Anne. I feel uncomfortable about killing any, anything, but then I've got to think of the future of the building. And we have to solve the problem of the pigeons before we can allow workmen to go in. Oh, what are you looking at? In North London, mum of three, Imogen, has battled pest infestations for 20 years. My eldest child finds it appalling that I'm a pest controller. With two science degrees to her name, she's well suited to the job. Being a female pest controller is just the same as being a male pest controller. Anything a man can do, a woman can do possibly better. These are what we're going to be used today, an insect growth regulator, um, mini smoke generators. Jeffrey's infestation is far greater than either he or I had imagined. Um, it's a fairly comprehensive treatment that's needed. Across Britain, moth infestations are on the rise. Powerful pesticides that once kept them in check are now banned. So Imogen has her work cut out. Actor Jeffrey's flat is riddled with them. My first professional role was playing the part of Puss in the pantomime Puss in Boots, which we did in Dartford. One of the problems I've had with the moths, I found them behind the photographs in, in my books. Well, it isn't cluttered exactly, but I, I'm not into minimalism at all. Um, if I was, I'd probably buy one of those awful places in the Barbican. Hello, how are you, Coco? I'm just getting ready to take him out. You're going to go for a walk while I do the work? So the plan is I'm going to spray throughout the flat with an insecticide and an insect growth regulator, mm -hmm. and then I'll set off some smoke bombs. And then I'll leave. Right, that's, uh, that, that sounds okay. okay. When Geoffrey first noticed the telltale holes in his upholstery, he had one prime suspect. I thought he must have been having a nibble at the carpet. And then I said, Coco, have you been doing this? And I said, that's not very nice, is it? Well, he doesn't understand, of course. And then the moth situation reared its ugly head and... Uh, Coco's been completely exonerated of blame. Well, see you later then. Come on, Coco. There's a good boy. I've done a spray on the carpet underneath and the one on top on both sides. We had found quite a problem in here, didn't we? Recent legislation limits the pesticides Imogen can use. Thinking creatively, she has devised a combination of treatments to attack the moths. The chemical will be composed of a carbamate insecticide mixed with an insect growth regulator. It prevents an insect developing in the way that it ought to. It's like having a child. The baby can't become a toddler, the toddler can't become an infant, the infant can't become a fully grown child, and then you can't get a teenager, so that's wonderful. The smoke bombs create a cloud of insecticide that targets the mature adult moths. In a few hours, the fumes will subside, so Imogen can return to finish the job. Moths are hard to kill because if one leaves a single viable egg, you can quite soon have a new population.
I've come back to put moth pheromone detectors in place. It releases the female pheromone, so the male moths are attracted to it. The pheromone traps lure in the adult males, which then get stuck to the glue pads inside. They'll also give Imogen an indication of how many moths are left. This has been a nightmare with the moths. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that because there's so many, you know, getting rid of them could be a bigger problem than perhaps I realise. We shall just have to wait and see. Plan of action is to put the rat traps down and see what we can catch tonight. On a Nottinghamshire farm, Ange is going into battle with a hundred strong pack of rats. It's just because of the rat urine to protect my hands, obviously. And we do it 12 years now, and I'm not about to get a disease now, I'll tell you that. Rats contaminate everything they touch through their droppings, urine and hair. And half of the UK's 10 million rats carry the deadly Viles disease. They don't look a very big trap to say how big the rats are, but they are very, very effective. They're called T-Rexes, obviously, because of that. <laughs> My uh, put some uh, chocolate flavours on, give them a bit of dessert tonight, I think. Right, I'm going to put this on this ledge. So when Rodney comes along, snatch. Let's put one here to seem pretty comfortable down here. They've chewed all this up as well. There you go. Look, look at the size of them droppings there. With traps, you should really check them every day. You've got to make sure it's humanely destroyed. That's what matters. Let's put that there. Let's see what we get. It may be tricky because there's still a good food source in here and they're so used to it and that's all they know of is potato and grain at the moment. But let's see if they can get lured in by a bit of chocolate. Stop telling me how to drive. Stop telling me how to drive. You watch my van and all. Never mind watch my van, it's my van. We don't often tell people that we're mother and son. I've told my aunt to call me mum at work, it's to call me Janet. You're going to go left, quicker if you go left. Are you telling me which way to go again? Yeah, huh? instead of taking scenic no. route, yeah. No, we'll go around back late. No, 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 go left. I have a lot of fun at work, and it's mainly down to working with mum. But we can wind each other up quite easily, really. I told you we should have gone left, you know. Janet took on her son, Tim, as her work partner eight years ago, and they're still together. I'm dead proud of our Tim, really. We both know how each other works, and we rub along nicely. Tonight, they have their sights set on Barmore Castle's pigeons. To help with the cull, Janet's called in fellow lady killer Angela, who has experience with guns. I'll tell you what, Janet, it's getting darker. Well, they've shown me this haunted room. Oh, great. Oh, oh I know, great. I know. Why did you tell me that? Don't... Janet! <laughs> I'll be pulling my pants now. Shooting the pigeons is the only option left to ensure the castle is safe so that renovation work can begin. And just a good shot. Tim's a good shot. Two hands are better than one. I know Anne's not comfortable about shooting, so I've asked her to just keep out of the way. There's droppings everywhere. They're all hiding. Just shine it round here a minute. Yeah. We'd get better results with doing a cull at night time, mainly because the pigeons are a bit more complacent. Got one. Didn't hit that at all. Bag it, Janet. Just here, just here. There's one, there's two there, look. Right. Yeah, on that ledge. You want me on it? No, you take that, yeah. What we use is a 2-2 air rifle, which is what is recommended. 
Angela's gun-mounted light has a red filter, which is less visible to pigeons and less likely to startle them into hiding. Gotcha. Got it. They're so bloody devious. They're hiding. We've got quite a few, I think 10 or 12. The team leaves the Peel Tower to investigate the opposite side of the castle. Is that the haunted room? I ain't going in there. You can forget it. I don't get paid it off. <laughs> is this the loft? Yeah, oh. this is where I came out of this room. And as I looked up, a pigeon stuck its head out. I think that's tomorrow's yeah. job. It's too dangerous to go up into the loft in the dark. I'll go back in in the morning and check that area out. I'm back at Barmore. I particularly want to go up into the locked space of the haunted room. Janet suspects there could be pigeons in the loft. They're down there somewhere. Then, Tim and Janet spot a hole. This is an entry point. This is how they're getting in. The position of the hole makes it almost impossible to reach. But if Barmore Castle is to be pigeon free, it needs to be sealed. My customers are all detached houses in the middle of nowhere, which makes my job very pleasurable. Recently, the most common thing I've been doing is wasp nests. They're coming in thick and fast. Lady killer Deborah has been battling pests in the south of England for 12 years, and summer is wasp season. Hello. Hi, Deborah. I hear you have a Here wasp nest. Are. Yes, they've taken over the owl box. That's an impressive nest. Yeah. Do you know how long it's been there? I only noticed it literally three days ago. OK, <laughs> I'm going to treat the nest with a powder. It doesn't right. kill them instantly, but it will make them very angry. <laughs> as soon as my little nozzle goes anywhere near that nest, you've got about 30 seconds and they will attack whatever they find. The powder contains an insecticide which coats the wasps and kills them in a few hours. I'm getting out of the way before they get even more angry. That's the skylight and they're going in and out there? Yes. You've got a few thousand wasps in there. Fingers crossed. Yes. We'll get it in one go. Super duper. I like to do things right. I don't like to fail. Anyone says that a woman can't do pest control, I'd say I'm living proof that they can. I love animals, and I'm much more of an animal lover than I am wanting to go out and terminate them. Deborah's kept horses for 17 years. I think every animal has a reason for being on the planet, but when they come into contact with humans, houses or property, and humans can't live with them, then they have to go. Good boy. Back to work now. I've just been called up to a church. They've got something buzzing in their belfry. I suspect it's possibly going to be wasps or bees. If it is bees, it will be a very big job, a very long job, but it will be very interesting. We have something in our belfry. belfry. I don't think it's bats. Problem is, we needed to have it uh, re-roofed, and we've discovered that there is some infestation in there, whether it's wasps, bees, or something flying. So we need to get rid of whatever it is. Um, basically so that we can do the re-roofing and we don't want people being stung. Can you show me where they are? Well, they, they are actually up in the, the top of the bell tower, above the bells. That's a very active nest. Right, let's see what we can see. Oh, 
they're most certainly honeybees. They're very small, brown, quite fluffy, whereas wasps would be much more yellow and black. Honeybees are not protected, but there are limited numbers of them now, so we don't destroy them unless we absolutely have to. So I'm going to need to call in beekeepers to come and help. Bees have a vital role in our food chain as a pollinator, improving the yield of crops. Moving them is a complex, highly specialised process. A little apprehensive. I've never actually removed a bee colony before, so uh, let's see how it goes. Time to uh, have a look at some of the rat traps. Oh dear, got one in here, lot. Angela suspects that Will's barn could house as many as a hundred rats. Yesterday's traps have only made a small inroad. Well, we got seven or eight rats out, but it's got to the point now where I'm not catching as many. If you've used trapping methods before and they know what they are, they will avoid a rat trap. So the best way of getting rid of these rats on this site will be the dogs. If you think a dog's jaw is like a backbreaker trap, as soon as the rat pops out, the dog's on it, snap, bang, done with. Far swifter than poison, this is Angela's preferred way to kill the rats. Good boy. Her dog Alfie is a trusted workmate, and today he's joined by Will's dog, Jinx. I am terrified of her. I'm not looking forward to this. <laughs> Normally stand well out of the way. Don't grab hold of me. I'm not going to grab hold of you. I'm going to run. <laughs> he doesn't seem very happy about it, but hopefully he'll stick with me and he doesn't run out of the building and leave me with it all to do on my own. Knowing that rats can jump and climb, Will had been too terrified to clear out the barn on his own. Oh, this is horrible, this is, isn't it? I took my socks and some trackers because I don't want them running up my legs. It's just, it's just when they come near you, it's just, I just think they're going to run at me, you know what I mean? We're actually trapped in here now. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Don't you think I already realised that? <laughs> There's no backing out. Come through your side, Will! Here, 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 Jinx, here, here, here! Where did he go? Back down there in one of them there. Go, go! Get it, get it, get it, get on it, go on, yeah, get on it. Hey, we've had the first one. Get ready, because we are behind there. Oh, no, this is horrible. This is going to come all my way, these are. Whoa, whoa, go on. Here, 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 Jinx, here, here, here. here. <laughs> Alfie! Good lad. Good lad, get on it! Yes, good boy, good boy. Oh, don't no, push them towards me. Two! Two! Good boy. Get ready. Tell him to shake the bale where that wet patch is, and I'm sure it seems for me. I told you, I knew I'd seen one. Get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it. Get it, get it. Get it, get it. Good, good. Ten round there, isn't there? Yeah. 12, 13, 14, that's 15 rats. And I've already caught nine rats. Yeah. And I've got a feeling there's quite a lot of rats in this bit. Ready, Will? I'm ready. Why are you up there? Sit down! Oh my god, the size of that one! Jinx, here! Here, Jinx! Here! 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 Here, it's behind you! Good boy, Boo Boo, bring it to mummy! We've had a successful day. I'd say we've cleared plenty of rats out. Nearly 40. So I'm quite chuffed with that job. We're going to have a continuous baiting plan around this area of the buildings because it's always going to be a food source building. Make sure that obviously it doesn't reinfest to that level again. 
it will surprise me on how um, he coped with it. He coped with it really well. Happy about that. Not going to go in there, worry about rats running across my feet. Hopefully that'll be the last of them. I'm start using it again for something now. Get ready for next year. Oi! Alf, in this truck. Good boy. Oh, he's tired. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Good boy, on your bed. Hi, it's Imogen. Thank you. Imogen's calling on Geoffrey for a progress report on his war against the clothes moths. You've seen less moths oh, actually flying around. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Let's go and look at all the monitors, mm. see how many are trapped in each one. This is the way we can see exactly how many are remaining yeah. and whether we need to do something else to pick up the remnants. A lot of moths in the traps will mean the population is still thriving. Have you seen many in your bedroom? Not a significant number, no. Oh, that's oh. very good. Because actually the bedroom was quite badly infected. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's nothing dead here and there's... Oh, fantastic. And there's, there were about seven or eight moths in there. Yeah, the... there's none. Yeah. Absolutely none at all. Oh, Imogen. <laughs> You're letting me down. You're not putting them as tidily as it. <laughs> so but, I'm but sorry. it's all right. I'll do it later. Last of all, Imogen checks Geoffrey's upstairs office. So this area wasn't sprayed with the insecticide and the insect growth regulator. We only did the smoke bomb. Because of the computer and the work surfaces and there was lots of stuff up here, I didn't want to spray with an insecticide. I have noticed that a few moths have been up here. <gasps> 38 moths. Shown us that there's much more activity up here, which I expected. I think what I should do is I should vacuum everywhere up here that I can reach. And then I might use a fogger up here, which is an insecticide, which is actually organic, so that you're not actually going to be poisoned by it. Little droplets coming out. It should be just making things wet. I've got a larder of, of things that I could use against clothes moths, and I'm not sure any of them are successful on their own. If this doesn't do it, I don't know what will. Judging by what Imogen's done today, I've just got to remain hopeful that we'll see the end of the moth problem. The only thing that I am really conscious of now is that since the initial treatment, I've been talking to various people, as one does, uh, in the local area, and it seems that these clothes moths are pretty prevalent around here at the moment. Look at these, I found my vintage sunglasses. Look at these. I had them on the other day. You've had my glasses on? Yeah. Kind of vintage, these are. They're good, aren't they? <laughs> We're back at the armour today. We've got a cherry picker on site. At first, the castle was thought to be all sealed off to the pigeons. But last time, Janet and Tim found a small hole in the loft where they were still getting in. Now Janet is wondering how secure the castle really is. See that one there? See that, yeah, where it's been bricked up. It's just come waddling out. The sneaky little tinkers. There's an altar side to the left. There's a hole at the top. Janet suspects that this could be another unsealed hole. Pigeons can squeeze through gaps as small as five inches. We check this, this window halfway down. This is that window that we thought where they were getting in at the side, isn't it? Yeah. And look, there's no holes in there. You know what I mean? It's sealed up, yeah. This was a false alarm, but that still leaves one hole into the loft to be properly sealed off. Oh, look, look at that. Perfect for them. So we need to get a good bit of mesh in there. It's quite a strong mesh. It'll fit compacted into the hole. 
So that's going right in. That should hold them out, that. The cherry picker gives Janet and Tim a chance to check for any more gaps. It's in good nick, isn't it? Yeah. The roof is sealed. Snow, is that? No. No, these are well sealed. Yeah, just have a look at this one, yeah, because I just want to get my hand in, see what I can see. That'll do, mate. No, yeah, you're right. It's just blocked off. After a painstaking search, it seems the castle could finally be pigeon-proof. But Janet knows that you can never be too sure. We think that they were getting in across that loft space mm -hmm. above the haunted room. Because there's no loft hatch on, we think they're dropping down and walking into Pill Tower that way. So you've sealed that off now, Janet? So well, we've sealed it off from the outside area. We've put, we've put the mesh in. Right. The best thing to do is to watch. Uh -huh. And this is what I want you to, uh, to do now, once we leave. I'd like you to go in and, and see if there is any inside. The next couple of days in. is going to be the, the real test, isn't it? It is. Fingers crossed. Looks like a good sized swarm. One of the most active ones I've seen. Deborah's called in beekeepers Steve and Dave. They'll show her how to move the honeybee colony that's taken hold in the church belfry. What's the worst that could happen up there? If you can smell lemon or banana smell, that's a clear sign that the colony's getting agitated. And it's always best then to back off. I'm quite happy just to keep still and keep calm at this stage anyway. Maybe if they're seriously buzzing around me, that might change. And I shall just back off gracefully. The first job is to establish the size of the colony. There's a significant amount of bees just in this area here. How many nests do you think there may be? We believe there's up to four. In just a few months, four hives could become home to over 200,000 bees. To move them, the beekeepers must expose the whole colony. Pretty impressive. The colony is pretty much contained in that area there. Deborah's specialist cameras allow her a close up view of the hard working bees. Within a colony, you would have several thousand worker bees, which are all female. Um, you'd have a few hundred drone bees, which are males, and one queen bee. The bees' regimented society is centered on a queen who lays all the eggs. She also emits pheromones that control the whole colony. Without her, there's no hive. If we can find the queen, the bees will follow wherever she goes. We try to save as much of this brood comb as we can. What is a brood? It's where they lay their eggs, which then hatch into larvae. A bit like a maternity wing. Exactly. Try not to cut any deeper than about an inch, because there could be another layer behind here. The bees are buzzing around us, but they're not attacking us. And considering we are really attacking their home, that's very impressive. Oh, yeah. there's the queen. She's there. Oh, I see her. Oh. Very gently. So I'm going to put her into this thing here. And now we have a queen. Fantastic. The plan is to transplant the colony into a new hive. That pops in next to that so that the bees can be moved to where they will no longer be a pest. This, this isn't a beehive in here, and this contraption on the top and the bottom allows us to use a hoover to suck up the bees, as if you were doing your normal housework, and the bees will end up inside, um, in there, totally unharmed. It's um, suck it and see. <laughs> We feel them going up the tube. So even though the hoover's coming down onto them, they're not trying to fly away from it. How many bees do you think are in this colony? Perhaps um, 15,000, 20,000. Whoa! These two new hives are larger still. That's an awful lot of bees. 
this is huge. Are you ready, Deborah, to get started on this one? Yes, I think so. As ready as I'm ever going to be. It's a lot harder than it looks. It's very tough. It feels like a rubbery sensation. I'm trying very hard not to flatten the bees. That's incredible. Not bad for a first effort. I feel absolutely shattered at the moment. It's a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> this is the bee colony that we rescued from this side of the building. And they're gonna sit in the shade for a bit before they get taken to their new home. If the bees survive the move and the queen carries on laying, the beekeepers will have a new colony to tend. Back at Barmore today, I've spoke to Anne and she's told me there's some pigeons back in the peel tower, much to my annoyance. We've been rammed and rammed and rammed the castle and I can't find any more holes. When I checked the building, my heart sank when I counted at least four or five of them. You know, I felt really uncomfortable about having to address this issue. Now I'm getting angry. Oh, so I can't believe they're back. OK, it's about, oh, gosh. I'll just give it a chance to settle. Oh, two. Oh, there's, I can hear um, the one And there's here. another one, so that's three. I just want to check in those two side rooms. Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh. oh, my goodness, Janice. There's a load. Heaven's delight. There's about eight. That's what pest control's like. You, you, you'll sort of think, right, I, I've, I've, I've got on top of that now. I know where I'm up to. And then suddenly, something, you know, unexpected happens and you think, what's happened here now? But Anne's been watching closely. She suspects the pigeons are finding yet another new way in. That wire no. up there looked as if it had been pulled out. Oh, it does, you know. I think what we need to do is get some better mesh in there. It's quite possible that's where they've been coming in and out of. Pigeons are known to be highly intelligent. They're one of the very few bird species who can recognise themselves in a mirror. Janet sets up a surveillance camera to see if they have found a way through the maze of mesh. You've got to give pigeons some sort of credit. They're very resilient. If they want to get in somewhere, they'll try the hardest to get in. But my mum does not like being beaten. Um, it's, it doesn't matter what job it is, if she feels as though she's being beaten, she will not be happy. Resealing this new hole with tougher mesh, Tim and Janet are leaving nothing to chance. It is good and it is a bit more solid and resilient. They're not getting through that now. Super pigeons couldn't get through that. It's really, really secure. Janet plans to catch the remaining pigeons in live traps to see if these are the last few in the castle. I'm going to pre-bait around the trap and inside the trap and then drop the bars down so the pigeons can go in, but they can't come back out. I'm going to scrape up some pigeon guana and sort of throw that in as well, um, just so that the pigeons feel a little bit more at home in their own guano. <laughs> it is last chance saloon, really. The secret is the way in and out, if they still have a way in and out now. Maybe they haven't, maybe these are the last ones. Faced with the recent surge in British moth infestations, historic houses need to be on constant guard to protect their collections. English Heritage employs a consultant entomologist to advise them on keeping pests at bay. 
So this is where Imogen can keep up to date with the latest expertise. Around 15 years ago, webbing clothes moths were not that common because some of the insecticides we were using, you probably do you remember the Dichlorvos, yeah. the Pona, that killed everything. You hung it up as a vapour strip, yeah. very effective. It's been banned for now for 12 yeah. years. And many of the other chemicals which were used as mothballs are now no longer legally uh, allowed to be used. Obviously, we don't want to treat historic collections or materials with pesticides. Yeah. So the most important thing is good housekeeping. What we basically do is take the curtains down, give them a good clean, check them at the same time. To clean this curtain properly, would you do just the one side or both sides? We, we do both sides. Both sides. Constant vacuuming removes moth larvae. Around here, moth prevention, it seems, is 99% cleaning. And a lot of people put rugs on top of carpets. And the problem is, this is where the insect pests are going to go, where it's dark, undisturbed. You'll have a build-up of dirt, debris underneath there, hair, human skin, food, possibly. And that is just providing that insect pest with everything it needs. So that is why it's so important to move these items and give them a thorough good clean underneath. My customer, Geoffrey, actually had moths throughout his flat. So I've vacuumed everywhere, mm -hmm. done insecticidal spray, then I did um, permethrin smoke bomb. Right. I'd love to know what you think I should do now. Well, you've been doing all the right things, but if he wants to get rid of his moths, he's got to do more hoovering, do it more regularly. People who have uh, moths in their clothes, yeah. then really the best way of dealing with that is to put them in the freezer. Can they put them in their own domestic freezers? Yes, two weeks in a ba plastic bag will kill everything. Imogen's eager to pass on the expertise to Geoffrey and to see if her treatments have worked. Hi, Geoffrey. How have your moths been? It has been a whole lot better. Would it be OK if I check the traps? Oh, yeah, by all means, yeah. Just one? Yeah, it is one. That's it's really good, good, yeah. We've got this population under control now, I hope, but what one needs to do, and you'll need to do this yourself, is to vacuum really well. Rather than just flicking the vacuum cleaner around occasionally, you need to have a regular system of vacuuming everywhere, underneath the furniture, both sides of the carpet. Any clothes about which you're worried, you must put in the freezer for two weeks, carefully wrapped up in plastic. And that will kill the moths? That should well, kill the, larvae, the, the eggs yeah. and the larvae, yes. I shall be much more vigilant than I was. There's no way it's going to ever happen again, if I can help it. Home-bought treatments can also be a deterrent. Herbs like lavender can mask the smell of fabric that attracts moths. One of my failings, I haven't been doing enough of it. I think this has been a really interesting job. I certainly think that if Geoffrey hadn't done something about his moths now, every piece of his clothing and every carpet would have been decimated. It has been a learning curve for me, and I'm now able to actually say that I can be on top of the situation. I'm here to see how my bees are doing after we rescued them from the bell tower. Quite strange being up here on a um, shopping centre. You wouldn't expect to find bees in a place like this. More and more people are keeping bees on their roofs. We've kept these for five years, and actually they survive really well in a town centre and urban environment. For honeybees to settle in a new home, it's vital the queen is healthy and laying. So where's our bee colony? It's right over the back there, in isolation, so that we can just establish absolutely that there's no disease before we introduce them too close to our own bees. Oh, gosh, no, there's yeah. hundreds of them. They don't even look that concerned that they've been moved. No, they're lovely bees. We can see eggs in here, which would indicate the queen's in here, alive and well and doing her job. Now, if you touch bees with the back of your hand, they will just gently move, and that way we can check the queen's not snuggled in underneath. Can you see her? I can. You can? Yeah. Oh, yes, I can. She's down on the right-hand side. We have a nice, healthy queen, a nice, healthy colony. We've seen eggs in there. 
a lot of my job is actually having to terminate pests uh, through one reason or another. And it's really lovely to have been able to rescue one for a change. This just makes it worth it, doesn't it? It's a big moment for Janet. If there are still only eight pigeons in the castle, it means she has finally cracked the case, seven weeks after her first visit. There's two in that one. There's two in there. Check them side rooms. Well, I can see it back end of one. How many is that? I've got one, two, three, four, and that's all I can see. What a result. We're quite confident that the pigeons that are in are, are, are sealed in. They, they're not going in and out. Let's sort these out first, yeah. then we can concentrate on any others. So what we're going to do is cull in as quick a time as we possibly can. Barmore Castle's last pigeons are humanely destroyed. Feral pigeons are classed as vermin, so once trapped, it's illegal to release them back into the wild. And that was all of them for me. Yeah, that's what I reckon. <laughs> right, hi there. All right? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. So we've had a good day today. Right. You can see with my beaming smile. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've sealed up every hole. Yeah. So I think now that it's job done. Fantastic. But I would like you to go into the castle at least once a week, just to make sure they're out. We are so grateful for the work that you've done. An old boss used to say to me, if you want a job done, bring in a woman and a busy woman. <laughs> and you've just, you've just lived up to that, <laughs> so thank you so much. Oh, no, you're, you're more than welcome, and I, I've loved my time here, actually. It's been a pleasure. See you soon. No, it's been lovely. Thank you. I do feel that we've, we've actually sealed up everywhere and we've solved the problem. But knowing how crafty pigeons are, at some point, you know, they may find another way in. You see this a whole colony. It makes me feel horrible. We, I know we only did this a few weeks back. Oh! There's an outside. I think there's probably a few hundred rats here. I'm used to this and it, it's grim reality. Some people just don't like the thought of anything being killed. Mm -hmm. 